at the Independent Filmmakers Lounge at Sundance, sponsored by the likes of Foreclosure Boys, of course, Talking Pictures, and Pugs Gear. We get to talk with a lot of great filmmakers, and I have a feeling this is one of them right here. This is a movie called Bo Pauly, uh, The People of Bo Paul, right. is what I've been told what that means. This is Max, Car actually, it's Maximilian, isn't it? Yeah, Van Maximilian Carlson, but I go by Max Carlson. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I don't see why. I think Van <laughs> Maximilian is. If I was called that, I would go by that. It's a pretty regal sounding name, I guess. It is regal. It sounds yeah. great, though. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about this <coughs> documentary. We, we unfortunately have just gotten this, so we haven't had a chance to see it yet. So tell us all about it. What is this about? Uh, well, my documentary, Bhopali, is about uh, one of the world's worst industrial disasters, which occurred in Bhopal, India. In the 70s, uh, an American chemical corporation known as Union Carbide installed itself in Bhopal, which is really like central India. And uh, they installed a pesticide manufacturing plant. And that pesticide manufacturing plant began to uh, produce a chemical known as methyl isocyanate. And that chemical is very toxic, very dangerous. Uh, and in the 80s, they decided to uh, start cutting costs to maximize profits. Now, a quick question for you. Why, why are they there at all? Is it easier for them to be in Bhopal than, it's, say... It's much cheaper. The labor is cheaper, and okay. it's just much cheaper to produce uh, the pesticides there. Uh, is part of the uh, inexpensive <coughs> nature due to lack of regulation? I'm d uh, sure, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, that's, that's a big part of it. Hmm. It's one of the big reasons that they've been able to get away with this uh, disaster for the last 26 years. But, uh, but yeah, in the 80s, they cut costs and they cut their security uh, and safety measures down quite a bit. Because that's where you want to cut them. Of course. Cut yeah. So, and of course, what happened was the methyl isocyanate tank leaked this gas and it spread around the community and killed around 10,000 people in the first three days um, and injured hundreds of thousands of people. Now, if I, I, I don't consider myself to be uh, completely out of the loop, but <coughs> I don't recall hearing a whole lot about this. Is that... No, no. Yeah, I didn't know about it. Most of my friends don't know about it. Most people I ask in America don't know anything about it, uh, which is sad because the disaster is ongoing. Um, after the disaster, uh, Union Carbide abandoned the factory, left all the chemicals there, and for the last 26 years, those chemicals have seeped into the groundwater, affecting uh, the water up to three kilometers from the plant campus. So you have a situation now where children are being born with birth defects due to the poisons, uh, things like cerebral palsy, mental disabilities, uh, mental uh, uh, malformed limbs. So you also have approximately 30,000 people uh, drinking this contaminated water because mm. they have no other choice. Now, I, I recall from my uh, media stuff in college, we call it media stuff, um, <coughs> that a documentary is allowed to take a point of view. A documentary is allowed to push its, its <coughs> agenda, but the best ones do it accurately. Right. So I'm just curious uh, how much of, of what you've done here, like, like, like you say, when they cut costs, they cut security. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is Union, <coughs> is it Carbide? <coughs> Union Carbide. Union Carbide. Yeah. I almost said Union Pacific with the trains there. But uh, what does Union Carbide say about that? Did they admit to the cuts, say, well, in I the security and in the... Yeah, well, I interview a former Union Carbide engineer in the documentary, and uh, that's where I got a lot of information out of. Um, he's one of the ones that, that says that they cut... Uh, in, in May of 1984, they decided to turn off the refrigeration unit that was supposed to store methyl isocyanate at zero degrees Celsius. Uh, and just a few months after that, uh, de December 1984, is when that tank leaked. So, I mean, there are also tons of other problems, but, you know, I, 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 I got all, most of my um, information from activists plus this uh, former Union Carbide engineer. So if you hadn't heard <coughs> about it, what, uh, what prompted you to, uh, well, how did you even hear about it in the first place, much less get prompted to actually? I heard it? about it through a friend of mine uh, who volunteered at a clinic in Bhopal mm -hmm. uh, that treats survivors for free. It's called the Sambhavna Clinic. It's located about two blocks from the fac uh, factory itself. And, you know, she, she, I don't know how she heard about it, mm. but uh, she told me about it. And um, I just became really interested in it. And uh, pretty much six months after that, I decided to make the documentary on it. So I, I went to India. I was there for approximately four months, uh, the beginning of, dis of 2009 and the end of 2009. Uh, so two trips. And, um, yeah, you know, it's... I think it's a story that needs to be told because m most people don't know about it. Right. Um, and the effects are ongoing. So uh, I'd say it's a, an ongoing tragedy. It's never ended. Has Union Carbide uh, responded <coughs> at all yet? I mean, were they cooperative at all during the um, 
I tried to contact them at least five times. Uh, my manager tried to call them like at least five times. Uh, my father, uh, my producer, we all tried my to contact. Dog. Yeah. Yeah, we walked our dog. <laughs> right. uh, the most response I've got from them was uh, one of the letters I sent. Uh, it was actually marked uh, refused on the envelope and sent back to me. So that that's all I've heard from them. Hmm. So do you think they're even aware that this is being released? Um. Well, a Variety article just came out about it yesterday, so I think that's the most attention that it's got so far, so maybe. Um, but, I, you know, the refused, uh, the indication of them marking refused might be that yeah. they know about it, but <laughs> I, I really don't know, because at that point, um, I was still, like, in the middle of making the film, so, you know, they always kind of under the radar at that point, so I really don't know. So again, in, in your research, <coughs> because we haven't seen, I don't know if, if you touch on this, um, Again, we had, we had talked about that we haven't heard about this. Yeah. Is that part of, uh, I, I know I'm getting conspiratorial here, is that part of a cover-up thing, or is that just because um, no, yeah. <coughs> we, we don't hear about uh, You know, we, we focus a lot on what happens in our country, and then yeah. we have World in a Minute, where these right. incredibly horrible, painful stories are reduced to a 10-second <coughs> number. I mean, is it, it just, is it just nature of how we get news, or is it something at Union Carbide kind of... I think well. it's I think it's both. I mean, for sure, Union Carbide has tried to uh, push this whole story under the rug. Uh, now they're owned by an even bigger company named Dow Chemical. Yeah. I mean, they make like I think they made like about forty-four billion dollars last year or something like that. But um, they uh, they both try to not say anything about it. I mean, every uh, every anniversary of the disaster near December, uh, many news outlets report on it. I think the only comment that that was made for like the last five years from a Union Carbide engineer was uh, official uh, was that um, they were saddened that they said they were saddened by the events, but it's not their responsibility is basically what they yeah, said. So they even so they admitted that they even knew about it. No, of course they know that exactly. They had anything to do with it. Well, they I'm sh they know that they had they they caused but it, but they're not admitting but, that. But they're not admitting that they're responsible for cleaning it up. Or, Okay, I, I'm no judge. We're not, I'm not going to pass judgment here. But in in your opinion, I'm assuming that you think they are responsible for for the accident. So yeah. how could they possibly not be responsible for the cleanup? Why? What are they saying to say we don't we don't have to pay for it? Well, um, well, Dow owns Union Carbide now. So what they claim is that since they didn't own Union Carbide at the time, they're not responsible. Union Carbide's still a company though, and they've pretty much just let their lawyers handle it. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, they don't want to uh, claim responsibility for it. They've uh, they've used some circular arguments uh, in defending themselves. They say that um, New York law doesn't apply because it took place in India, hmm. uh, and they say that they can't. Uh, An Indian law doesn't apply because it's a case based out of New York. So, in essence, what they've claimed is that they're kind of above the law. The Indian law, New York law doesn't apply, and the. Uh, the case that I'm talking about is the uh, the class action lawsuit uh, represented by um, this guy named uh, uh, Rajan Sharma, an attorney, and uh, he's uh, representing the um, victims of the disaster against Union Carbide. So I think they've really exploited the fact that it's an international, uh, you know, uh, yeah. problem, and and international jurisdiction is always very tricky. I think. Um, you know, uh, it's hard to to uh, police something like that. So, so, so again, not 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 to uh, pass judgment, but if they are responsible, it sounds like they are using the law to dance around. Of course, of course, they have. I mean, since the disaster occurred twenty six years ago, mm -hmm. and these court cases have been going on since then. Um, there, there was there wasn't a settlement in nineteen eighty nine between Union Carbide and the Indian government, um, and it's really sad. It amounted to about. 500 to a thousand bucks per survivor per victim um, and The people of Bhopal were outraged at that. Sure. I mean none of them were consulted for the settlements So many feel that the Indian government and I feel that the Indian government really sold them out at that point um, So Union Carbides also claimed that that's something that uh, you know they, that they washed their hands at that point with the settlement but uh, the settlements never took into account the ongoing disaster. It only addressed the gas right. survivors. The next generation. Yeah, exactly. It didn't uh, address anything having to do with water contamination. Uh, it didn't address the environmental issues, just purely the survivors. So really, this is another issue that uh, 
um, they're arguing about now and, and that they're trying to defend themselves about. Um, but uh, unfortunately, they've been successful so far. Mm. Um, they have a they have a lot of time and all the money in the world. They have so a lot of money. Like they have to tons wait of money. Out the clock if exactly. Indeed that is the case. Um, in a perfect world, well, in a perfect world, you probably wouldn't have to make this. But in a perfect world, what would you like to see happen after the <coughs> release of this movie? Um, what I want to see happen is that. Um, Americans and internationally uh, awareness is raised about it because like I said uh, most people don't even know about it they certainly and if they do they certainly don't know that it's continuing uh, this disaster so I want I want people to, to know what occurred I want the, uh, them to hopefully help and, and stand up and uh, what I really want is Union Carbide to be held liable for, for the disaster because sure. uh, it's their fault um, so I, I don't see any other way to, to view it so how uh, has it been premiered yet? Yeah, last night at Slamdance. How'd it go? It was cool. Um, it was a good turnout. Um, <coughs> many people were uh, many people really liked it. They were asking tons of questions about it last night. Um, so I'm really happy that uh, it, it touched an emotional chord with people. I think. Well, uh, if uh, if people have questions after seeing this, where can they go? They can go to the website. It's uh, bopollythemovie.com. B H O P A L I themovie.com. Um, and you can you could find out all about how to help. You could find out about the film uh, screenings uh, that'll take place. There's actually a screening uh, on Tuesday tomorrow at noon at the Treasure Mountain Inn at Slam Dance. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd say visit the website and you could find out all about how to get involved if you want as well. Okay, uh, well we're gonna check it out. Quite a labor of love and a very important documentary. Bo Polly, Maximilian, cool. thanks very Thank much you. for coming out. Thank you.